Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Sunday, January 17th, 2020. What a privilege it is to be able to spend this time together with you in God's word as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We begin today by reading Psalm 76. God is known in Judah. His name is great in Israel. His tent is in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. There he shatters the bow's flaming arrows, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of war. You are resplendent and majestic, coming down from the mountains of prey. The brave-hearted have been plundered. They have slipped into their final sleep. None of the warriors was able to lift a hand. At your rebuke, God of Jacob, both chariot and horse lay still. And you, you are to be feared. When you are angry, who can stand before you? From heaven, you pronounced judgment. The earth feared and grew quiet. When God rose up to judge and to save all the lowly of the earth. Even human wrath will praise you. You will clothe yourself with the wrath that remains. Make and keep your vows to the Lord your God. Let all who are around him bring tribute to the awe-inspiring one. He humbles the spirit of leaders. He is feared by the kings of the earth. Yesterday, as we read Ezekiel chapter 38, we heard God's pronouncement against Gog of Magog, who is the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Gog, again, is a symbol of all of the enemies of God's people. And as we continue reading from Ezekiel today in chapter 39, we see the ultimate destruction and disposal of all of God's enemies and the enemies of his people. As for you, son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, this is what the Lord God says. Look, I am against you, Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around, drive you on, and lead you up from the remotest parts of the north. I will bring you against the mountains of Israel. Then I will knock your bow from your left hand and make your arrows drop from your right hand. You, all your troops, and the peoples who are with you will fall on the mountains of Israel. I will give you as food to every kind of predatory bird and to the wild animals. You will fall on the open field, for I have spoken. This is the declaration of the Lord God. I will send fire against Magog and those who live securely on the coasts and islands. Then they will know that I am the Lord. So I will make my holy name known among my people Israel and will no longer allow it to be profaned. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Yes, it is coming and it will happen. This is the declaration of the Lord God. This is the day I have spoken about. Then the inhabitants of Israel's cities will go out, kindle fires and burn the weapons, the small and large shields, the bows and arrows, the clubs and spears. For seven years, they will use them to make fires. They will not gather wood from the countryside or cut it down from the forests, for they will use the weapons to make fires. They will take the loot from those who looted them and plunder those who plundered them. This is the declaration of the Lord God. Now on that day, I will give Gog a burial place in, the, in Israel, the traveler's valley east of the sea. It will block those who travel through, for Gog and all his hordes will be buried there. So it will be called Hord, Hordes of Gog Valley. The house of Israel will spend seven months burying them in order to cleanse the land. All the people of the land will bury them, and their fame will spread on the day I display my glory. This is the declaration of the Lord God. They will appoint men on a full-time basis to pass through the land and bury the invaders who remained on the surface of the ground in order to cleanse it. They will make their search at the end of the seven months. When they pass through the land and one of them sees a human bone, he will set up a marker next to it until the barriers have buried it in the hordes of Gog Valley. There will, there will even be a city named Hemona there. So they will cleanse the land. Son of man, this is what the Lord God says. Tell every kind of bird and all the wild animals, assemble and come. Gather from all around to my sacrificial feast that I am slaughtering for you, a great feast on the mountains of Israel. You will eat flesh and drink blood. 
You will eat the flesh of mighty men and drink the blood of the earth's princes, rams, lambs, male goats, and all the fattened bulls of Bashan. You will eat fat until you are satisfied and drink blood until you are drunk at my sacrificial feast that I have prepared for you. At my table, you will eat your fill of horses and riders, of mighty men and all the warriors. This is the declaration of the Lord God. I will display my glory among the nations and all the nations will see the judgment I have executed and the hand I have laid on them. From that day forward, the house of Israel will know that I am the Lord their God. And the nations will know that the house of Israel exile on account of their iniquity, because they dealt unfaithfully with me. Therefore, I hid my face from them and handed them over to their enemies, so that they all fell by the sword. I dealt with them according to their uncleanness and transgressions, and I hid my face from them. So this is what the Lord God says. Now I will restore the fortunes of Jacob and have compassion on the whole house of Israel, and I will be jealous for my holy name. They will feel remorse for their disgrace and all the unfaithfulness they committed against me when they live securely in their land with no one to frighten them. When I bring them back from the peoples and gather them from the countries of their enemies, I will demonstrate my holiness to them in the sight of many nations. They will know that I am the Lord their God when I regather them to their own land after having exiled them among the nations. I will leave none of them behind. I will no longer hide my face from them, for I will pour out my spirit on the house of Israel. This is the declaration of the Lord God. Today we're going to read again the last portion of Romans chapter 7 and then move into Romans chapter 8 and hear the glorious news that there is now no condemnation for us who are in Christ Jesus. So I discover this law. When I want to do what is good, evil is present with me. For in my inner self I delight in God's law but I see a different law in the parts of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and taking me prisoner to the law of sin in the parts of my body. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind, I myself am serving the law of God, but with my flesh, the law of sin. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, since it was weakened by the flesh, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as a sin offering, in order that the law's requirement would be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit have their minds set on the things of the spirit. Now the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and, and peace. The mindset of the flesh is hostile to God because it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it is unable to do so. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Now, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his spirit who lives in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we are not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh, because if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all those led by God's Spirit are God's sons. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children, and if children, also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. 
At the beginning of our reading today, we heard the Apostle Paul in chapter, say in chapter 7, verse 23, I see a different law in the parts of my body, waging war against the law of my mind, and taking me prisoner to the law of sin in the parts of my body. In our writing for today from the pen of Martin Luther, we hear Martin Luther's thoughts about that particular passage. This particularly Pauline way of thinking and speaking is very pleasing and comforting. Similarly, in Romans chapter 7, verse 23, he opposes the law of the spirit to the law in his members. Because this way of speaking is so new and strange, it enters more easily into the heart and remains more firmly in the memory. Besides, it sounds sweeter when he says, I through the law died to the law, than if he were to say, I through liberty died to the law. For he is drawing a picture as though law were battling against law. It is as though he were saying, law, if you are able to bite me, bind me, and plague me, I will put another law above you, that is, another tyrant and tormentor, who will accuse you, bind you, and oppress you in turn. You are indeed my tormentor, but I have another tormentor, namely Christ. He will torment you all the way. When you have been tormented all the way by him, then I am free. Likewise, if the devil whips me, I have a stronger devil who will whip him in turn. And when the more powerful devil battles and conquers the powerful one, I am set free. Thus, grace is a law, not to me, because it does not bind me, but to my law. This it binds in such a way that it cannot bind me any longer. Therefore, Paul would like to draw us away completely from looking at the law, sin, death, and other evil things, and to transfer us to Christ, in order that there we might see this very joyous duel, the law battling against the law, in order to become liberty to me, sin battling against sin in order to become righteousness to me, death battling against death in order that I might have life. For Christ is my devil against the devil that I might be a son of God. He destroys hell, that I might have the kingdom of heaven. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, Creator Spirit, by whose aid. Creator Spirit, by whose aid the world's foundations first were laid. Come, visit every humble mind. Come, pour your joys on humankind. From sin and sorrow set us free. May we your living temples be. And we pray, O oh God, the strength of all who trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing, grant us your grace to keep your commandments, that we may please you in both will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time together with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.